Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Kiko Lopez. Kiko, how are you? I'm doing good, Mike. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Kiko, you recently picked up a win at Pandemonium MMA 7. How did you feel about your performance in the fight? Um, like you said, I picked up the win, but as far as how I feel about my individual performance, you know, honestly, I'm not too pleased with it. Um, I felt like that I was just, it wasn't patient enough. I was just trying to knock, you know, just trying to knock him out instead of just, you know, following the game plan. But hey, I picked up the win, so, uh, you know, you know, could have been worse. You were originally supposed to fight Danny Martinez, but instead you fought Willie Gates. How long did you have to prepare when you found out that you were going to have a new opponent? Actually, to correct you there, um, I was originally supposed to fight Stephen Abbott, and then um, apparently uh, he got injured during training. So did Danny Martinez. Then I was scheduled to fight Daryl Montague, but then something happened. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I don't know if he just declined for another opportunity or whatnot. So I got to uh, fight Willie Gates, and um, I knew about, I want to say, four days before the fight that I had a, finally had an opponent. And how much did your game plan have to change with all these opponents being flip-flopped around? Well, you know, we're, we're working primarily more wrestling. Cause like I said, we were going to fight uh, Stephen Addis, which is a silver medalist in the Olympics, great wrestler, um, talking to the wrestling community. Everyone, you know, seemed to know him, obviously, and... Uh, This fight was part of the Pandemonium Flyweight Tournament. Uh, this was a semifinal fight. Now, looking forward to the finals, you're going to be facing Steve Swanson. How much would it mean to you to win this whole tournament? Oh, man, to win this whole tournament, that would, that would mean the world to me. Man. Um, you know, this is why I'm in the sport, you know, to collect belts. Um, I've, had, I've definitely had some uh, you know, ups and downs in my, in my uh, four-year career thus far. Um, but I feel, you know, I've fixed a lot of those problems. Fix my attitude, fix, you know, finally just doing all the things I should have been doing a long time ago as far as, you know, taking it serious and, and uh, you know, training hard and things like that. And I just finally feel I like put my game together now and, you know, uh, you know, when I fight Steve, Steve Swanson and win that title, you know, it's going gonna, gonna to mean, uh, mean a lot to me, man. You fought on the same card as him, obviously, being a part of that tournament, but how much do you know about Steve Swanson? You know, I didn't even see his fight. I'm not mm. sure if you saw my fight. I, I don't know anything about him. Um, I know he beat, uh, he did beat my teammate, Jesse Cruz. Um, and, uh, he just, my, my boy fell a little bit and he capitalized on the, capitalized on the, my guy's mistake. But, um, I mean, he's undefeated. You know, he's undefeated for a reason. Obviously, he's not a, he's not a, uh, you know, schmuck. <laughs> you know, he knows what he's <laughs> right. doing. Right. You know, he has a, you know, he has a brother who fights in USC, so must have, must have a similar DNA genetic code. So, uh, don't know much about him, but I think stylistically this fight, being that he's my height, and, you know, uh, it's going to be a little, a little easier for me to, uh, you know, implement the game plan. You're fighting in a new weight class, you're now at flyweight. The weight cut for this fight, was it, was it easy, was it difficult? What did you go through to make the weight? Um, well, I went through, uh, being two pounds overweight mm -hmm. at the weigh-ins, um, then I had to go sit in my car and do two 45-minute stretches in my plastics with, uh, with the heater on full blast, which I don't advise to do, but, um, you know, it was my first time, like you said, I, I didn't really, I've never had to cut weight before, you know, I never wrestled in high school or not, so I've never, like I said, I never had to cut weight, so I was kind of just flying blind on this one and just went for it, um, so, yeah, it was pretty tough, man, to be honest, I don't want to, I don't want to um, use that as an excuse, you know, to say that's why I perform up the part in my fight against Willie Gates. He's a Willie Gates, the game opponent. He did what he had to do, but um, I just I know that next time around I'm going to really just deal with the deal with people, help me out, cut this weight properly, so I can feel feel strong and not feel so uh, lethargic in my fight. 
Why did you decide to make the drop to flyweight? Was it because bantamweight, you were just a little bit too small for that weight class? Or was it because, because now flyweight is starting to take off and there's more and more shows that are promoting that weight class? What's the reason behind going down in a weight class? Well, it's just, you know, a little bit of both. Um, you know, I, I walk around at 140 pounds, so when I was training, uh, when I was training four fights, naturally you're going to lose about, you're going to walk, you know, I, me personally, I walk like five pounds, you know, three to five pounds lighter when I'm, when I'm training, so, uh, you know, I was, I wasn't having to cut weight to make 35, and when I'd rehydrate, I'd rehydrate like two or three pounds, get in the cage at 138, some of the guys I would fight were rehydrating to like 155, you know, or 150, you know, being at their 15, you know, 15, 20 pounds heavier than me. And, um, you know, I just felt they had the, stri- the, the strength advantage. I was just a real small flyweight. It's really in my mind the walking around weight. I mean, I'm 135 right now. I'm trying to put on a little bit of weight now that I'm at the new weight class. So, uh, you know, just, just fighting and doing, you know, fighting at a weight class where I can optimize my chance of winning, cutting the weight, fighting guys my size, and implementing game plans. And I just having to go in there and try to um, fight an unnatural fight and, you know, going there trying to knock them out every time. So, um, you know, that's the reason why I made that move to fly away. It's just a little more natural for me. You train at Team Quest down in Temecula, California. We really don't hear much about the lighter weight classes. We hear about guys like Dan Henderson and Sokaju and, and guys like that who are you know in the heavier weight classes, but we really don't hear too much about the little guys. Who are some of the guys that help you train? Uh, we got uh, Jesse Cruz. Uh, he, uh, Jesse Cruz, like I mentioned earlier, he, he fought Steve Swan, Swanson and uh, you know it didn't, didn't go his way that night. Uh, we got uh, one of our up-and-coming amateur fighters, a real promising career uh, ahead of him, Martin DeVita. Um, good, just bitch of jitsu guy, good, good little boxer, you know. Um, still learning, obviously, he's in the amateur ranks right now, but uh, like, like you said, there's not too many guys in Team Quest that are my size, so I don't get too too much sparring partners with guys my size, but I mean, you know, I go with guys like Terry Safferdine, you know, on stand up days and get punched around by Dan and bullied by him a little bit, and some of these other guys that, that you know, that are in there. Um, I mean, I'm forgetting a lot right now. But, uh, I mean, you know, there's, there's a good, good stable of talent there. So as long as I'm in there training and just trying to learn every day, you know, I should be all right. Kiko, are you a full-time fighter or do you work another job? Um, now I'm a full-time fighter. I just gained an employment recently at a gym here in my home, uh, right here in the town I live in, which is near Yetta, teaching a kids MMA class, um, some Muay Thai classes and women's you know, kickbox, cardio kickboxing class. So uh, I train during the day, doing two days, starting to lift weights now and, uh, you know, work, 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 in, work my schedule in as far as working at the gym and stuff. Right now, are you taking some time off to rest the body or are you already back to training? Uh, I'm, I'm back. I came back uh, Wednesday of this week. Um, I was just getting a, then my elbow recovered a little bit. Willie Gates in my last fight he caught me in a pretty slick arm bar and uh, popped my elbow out of place. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's doing good now. It's still a little sore, but, um, you know, it's, it's not bad to where it's, it's just a little hurt. It's not, I'm not injured or not. It's just a little sore. So we're just, you know, pushing through that, trying to stay mentally tough and, you know, getting geared up for Steve Swanson, man, because, uh, you know, we both got seven wins. Obviously, he's undefeated. I'm not, but he has seven wins. I have seven wins. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a barn burner, man. It's going to be a... Uh, going to go down like a plane crash, man. So, uh, you know, I'm back in the lab, back training, training hard, and ready to go get that belt. You fought tougher competition than Steve Swanson with fights against Kid Yamamoto. How much does experience really help and fighting tougher competition really help you when you go in against a new opponent? Um, you know what? I don't know. You know, it's kind of hard to answer that question as far as you know, having the mind state from being on the other side of the fence because I've never really fought, you know, weak opponents. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, like you said, you know, like my first, you know, my first pro Muay Thai fight, I fought in, in K1 against, a, you know, you know, uh, K1 gold medalist, trained under Masato. We fought at 147. I weighed in at 139. He cut weight to make 147, you know, so I was definitely outside. I dropped him in the first round, kind of wasting my gas tank going after him, a fighting kid, and some other tough guys. But, uh, you know, I just think... Um, Going in there, I don't think he's really going to present something that I 
hadn't seen before, you know, um, and he's definitely not going to, you know, like I said, I'm not going to see none that I haven't seen before, and I just got to, you know, just, as long as I do what I do, you know, I should be all right. Mm -hmm. I remember your post-fight interview when you fought in Dream, and, and you said that when you fought Kid Yamamoto, you were really in awe of fighting in Japan. You're fighting a, a huge yeah. star. You know, you were just in awe of you know the whole experience. Yeah. What did you learn from that fight and the experience that happened in Japan? I learned that next time I get to the big show, you got to go into that show as a professional fighter, not as a fan. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, like I said, I mean, Kitty Amuro is someone I, I looked up to and I, I continue to look up to, you know, even though he's had a rocky couple, you know, bad fights or whatever. Um, you know, he's still one of the greatest ever, man. He's going to go down as one of the greatest ever. He definitely had me on experience. He had me on everything, you know, skill, experience, you know, the level, everything, you know, straight up and down. But, um, you know, when I was in there in that, in that, um, uh, in that event, you know, I was just, I was in the, fight, you know, I was a fan fighting in the dream, you know, I wasn't a fighter in there mm. ready to win, mm. you know, so mentally I wasn't mature enough, uh, you know, and professionally I wasn't experienced enough, experienced enough to, uh, to go in there and do what I had to do, but now, you know, I just, I've been through that, been through those trials and tribulations, so, you know, next time when I get to that big show, you know, I'm going to be there not as a fan, but as a fighter, and, you know, ready to, you know, do what I train, what I've been training to do. Mm -hmm. Kiko, I'm, I'm curious, what are your goals in the sport? Oh, man, um, a short-term goal, obviously, is to get, get to the, you know, the big dance, which is the UFC. Um, and uh, my long-term goal is, is uh, you know, collect belts there, man. I'm, I'm going to get this belt against Steve Swanson, you know, God willing. And um, after that, um, you know, get to, get to the UFC, you know, with maybe a couple more wins if they pick me up after or, or, you know, whatever the case may be, but I'm just going to keep working to get there, take one fight at a time, and once I do get there, um, you know, I'm going to, again, take one fight at a time until I get that title shot and, uh, you know, snatch up that title, and uh, once I do that, I can use that. You know, I'm not in the sport for fame, I've never been in it for fame or publicity, but I know that if I can get some recognition like that, then that's going to help me hopefully one day open a own gym and teach kids and not just to be fighters but to be good people you know you know create good people with my kids classes and have my own gym and people who can't afford to train come in I'll let them train anyway we gotta mop my match or something or clean my car or something and mm -hmm. make them earn it mm -hmm. so you know that's my ultimate goal man get a belt help that help that propel me to you know have my own gym one day and uh, teach these kids man so we can have some some beast the next generation I don't know when the next Pandemonium card is going to be. Maybe you have some, some insight on that, but are you locked in with them? What I mean by that is could you possibly take a fight from now until that, now that until card? Now until Steve? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I, I knew that when I signed the contract to fight my original opponent, you know, which was Steve Abbs, um, I couldn't fight before is the semifinal bat, which just took place on the 18th. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's a good question. I got to find out. I got to call my manager and um, find out if I can. Because like I said, I, I barely back in the gym. I took, you know, a week and a half, almost two weeks to uh, let my elbow recover a little bit. So um, I'm going to ask him if I could because I would, I would like to get a fight in between just to stay busy. Because, you know, like I said, the last time I fought prior to the 18th was in November. And again, I don't want to use that as an excuse, but you know, I mean, fighters know there is some sort of ring rust, you know, when you get from there taking a nine month layoff and you know, you probably don't do things. Me personally, I didn't do what I wanted to do. So I, I want to stay busy this time and uh, go in there and just let things kind of just happen a little more free flowing for me so I can uh, have the performances I want. Kiko, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, man, so all those who support me, I want to thank you guys. God bless you guys. You know, thank you for every, for every, you know, every, uh, you know, nice gesture and kind words you guys have, man. Definitely uh, appreciate you guys. And uh, for my fans, you know, I want to thank you guys also. You know, you guys have been awesome. You guys have been supportive with me. You know, through the times I got knocked out by kids to the times I'm, you know, I've won and knocked people out, man. You guys have been there for me. I appreciate you guys. Um, Hugs versus them. Big shout out to them. Um, check him out online, us 
Shazam.com, ClinchGear.com, um, Team Quest, obviously, and, uh, and you, man, Mike, Mike Radich. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me if I'm not uh, pronouncing No, that. no, you got, you got it right. You got it right. Yeah, I'm impressed. There you go. Mike Radich, man, doing his thing, you know, interviewing all this, you know, star fighters and up-and-comers as myself, man. Just, just thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule and calling a little Mexican like me and interviewing uh, <laughs> me, man. I appreciate it, bro. No, no, no. I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. I know it's late. Kiko, I'm looking forward to this fight with Steve Swanson. Once again, oh. thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Hey, man, I appreciate you, bro. I'm looking forward to it, too, man. And uh, I'll uh, talk to you after I get that bell, and uh, maybe we go grab a beer or something. <laughs> All right. All right, Mike. Take it easy, bro.